Welcome back. Here's where we finished off at the end of part eight uh, with the assembly of the gun carriages. I think you could probably stop at this point if you wanted, apart from the barrels obviously and the carriage wheels because the position of these guns in the lower deck is very little is going to be seen I believe through the gun port. So you could stop here if you wanted. However, we'll continue on. So moving on, we'll continue with the assembly of the rest of the parts, primarily the cylinders that we, or tubes that we rolled earlier. And I want to highlight another discrepancy that I've highlighted the brass tubes, or brass rods, sorry. Uh, and some of these are duplicated, of course. I want to highlight the difference in size. So the smaller ones I've made yellow, uh, and the larger ones I've made pink. Okay. Now, the instructions ask you to roll all these small tubes round 0.8 millimeters. It doesn't make sense when you've got a tube this size and that size. Now, if we look at the diagram, it shows you the diameters and sizes of the wire. They're all more or less 0.3 and or 0.2. I don't know how you could have a 0.3 mil and a 0.3 mil. So that doesn't make sense to me. And then just for us, hopefully you can see this. But these are the five parts that we cut out and rolled around the 0.8 millimeter. And these are threaded onto the 0.3. So we've got a 0.8 diameter tube on a 0.3. You can see the amount of space of this. Also, I'm not very happy with the fact that the tubes will be open because it will look a bit strange considering they're supposed to be cylinders. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut the ends of the, the cylinders and I've got a couple of examples here where I've substituted the 0.3 millimeter wire for uh, a 0.8 because that's what we rolled the tubes on and that's a 0.5 and uh just to see if i can get them to look a bit a bit better the main concern was the 0.8 there wouldn't be a, a big enough distinction between the the paper part and the wire part but i think that's acceptable with what we can see here the 0.5 looks relatively okay I'm not 100% happy with it. And it's a lot more work, as you can see, by cut the inner caps for the cylinders where we have to do one millimeter and half a millimeter. And it's the extra work involved just isn't worth it. What I'll do is I'll replace the 0.3 mil with the 0.8 mil that we rolled on. And I'll give a reasonable size, I guess. And then what I'll do is I'll just paint the brass with Vallejo model colour off-white because that's just what I've got handy. So I'll use that. For the one mil discs for, to cover the ends, I wanted to use the thinner paper that the tubes came on so I didn't extend the overall length too much, but I couldn't get it to punch successfully. So I've actually used the normal paper from the kit parts and I'll, I'll show you how I did that next. So I've, I've got this RP tools punch and die set and punches holes from 0.5 millimeters up to two millimeters in 0.1 millimeter steps. So it comes with a little hammer. And then we've got the actual die itself. Maybe it's just my particular example, but when you slacken the locking nuts, the plastic, the clear plastics doesn't pop up or lift up. So I have to keep pulling it to be able to work the material in through. But we'll show that. I found when doing the paper anyway, you'd actually, I don't actually tighten these, I just hold it. So the actual punches themselves, They come in, it's a one millimeter, that's the one we'll use. So just an aluminium body, a label on the top for the size, and then the actual uh, punch itself. And that just slots into the hole. Of course it's dropped right through because there's no material. You just tap it. 
So for the paper I used for the discs, I did try the thin paper, but it, it just didn't hold its shape and it was very rough. Uh, so I discarded that and I tried the slightly thicker paper comes with the kit parts. And doing it just with the bare paper, again, it was very hit or miss whether you got a clean uh, circle cut out. So what we'll do is we'll just strengthen this with CA glue or super glue, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it. CA glue dispensed onto the candle, it remains usable for a lot longer than if you just dispensed onto a piece of card or a piece of plastic or whatever. And then we'll just use CA, uh, this is Zap, and we we'll use the thin because we want it to soak through the paper. So we'll just dispense some into the this candle. And then what we'll do is we'll use this needle, just a normal sewing needle. And then if we dip it in, the eye, the needle forms a, a reservoir. And then we can just touch it. And hopefully, I'm not sure, hopefully you could see a color change where the, the glue is soaked into the paper. And we'll just work our way along. We'll work underneath. Sometimes if it doesn't soak all the way through, we can just come in from the back side. Because we want it to be uh, fully wetted all the way through. We don't have too much like sitting on the surface. We want it to fully soak in, but not have excess. Okay, so that's enough for this example. So we'll just let this go off and it becomes oh, essentially almost like very thin plastic card. With the super glued paper now set, uh, hopefully you can see it. So it's almost translucent uh, where it's been soaked in the CA and that's the join between CA and normal paper. So I'm not sure if that's clear on the screen. So we'll feed it in through the die. Uh, we're on the one mil mark there and we just push it down to hold it. I found that you can almost push it through by hand. In fact, you can't, you can't push it through by hand. However, sometimes it's a bit, uh, a bit rough. So although it's only thin paper, I still prefer to use the little hammer and it seems to give uh, a lot cleaner cuts. I don't know if the reason but it does. And then that's the one we just done. It's actually better to get it clear. Like as you punch one, retrieve it so it doesn't bunch up and then stick together. Here we go. So as you can see, you can knock these out pretty quick. Okay. So that's a one mil disc cut out from the, the CA soaked paper. Okay. So for attaching the, the discs we made to the end of the tube, what I've done is I've just slided it onto the 0.8 brass that we rolled it against. We use this, it's a wax pickup pencil. So you just touch it against the thing and it sticks to the wax, but it's not strong enough that it works against the glue. It's very handy for placing accurately tiny parts, foot wedge, whatever, but it works with the paper as well. So using PVA, We'll just paint a bit on the end. And then picking up the part with the pencil, we can stick it on. And that's it. I'll just give it a little press with the tweezers. And then if we can slide it off successfully, here we go. I'll just give it a bit of a squeeze. So we need to do this on one end 
of all the tubes we've made. So each side's got a long tube and a short tube. So we will just cap one end of each one. Okay, so I'll do all that off, off screen. So here we have the different types of tubes with their cups. And for the shorter ones, I've actually glued them on to the brass, the pointed mill. Now for the cups, from the example I showed, I've actually mixed up a bit. So these ones here with no markings, they were the one mil cup. In some cases, due to differences in the tube diameter, some of them were a bit oversize for the middle ones with or the marking on them i went down to 0.9 millimeters and, and they seem to fit within the tube a lot better then i had a real light bulb moment and for the small ones with the brass i end up making the discs 0.8 because obviously that's what we rolled through so they are going to be a better fit so that's what i've done in the end was go to 0.8 so with them all capped we can now start assembling them so the parts j's and k's are for the right hand side and they're a slightly longer length than the parts m and n which is on the left hand side and they're shorter. So to assemble, we'll just take one of and we'll just push it together initially. And then what to do also is hopefully you can see, but we want to line up the two seams. So once we're ready to fit them, we'll turn it and glue it down with the seams downwards and then you won't see anything. So we'll just drop this in. It's a bit short. And then we can just move this in and out to set the correct length. Okay, and as you can see, the seams are lined up. So that's the right hand side one. And then we'll just do the same for the left. So these ones are got a line on them. It's the only difference I can see. So again, line up the two seams. And then we slide it in. And then that's that one. The jig just saves you having to keep measuring them every time. So now we've got a consistent length. I wasn't going to use glue, but some of these I might just have to put a little dab of glue just to lock them. And then I'll come in and paint the, the brass. Okay, so we'll paint the brass parts now with the model color off-white. I'll try a, a water down solution first. And let's just get along the top. I was a bit worried with it being brass and shiny that I'd have trouble with the paint, but seems to be going on pretty good. A bit patchy, but what I might do is wait until it's dry and then see if I need to go and just put another coat on. I think if I touch it again, it'll probably just drag off the paint I've already done. I thought, no, it's not too bad. So we've got all the brass painted white now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these aside for the time being. I'm not going to fit them to the carriage just yet. Because we want to concentrate on the next or the last tubes. And these are representing the worm gears and we'll have to fix these with the wire going all the way through and they sit inside the carriage so we'll do these next because they'll just get in the way if we fit them so with that said let's do the internals now so we've got the two worm drives here and here we've got a cross shaft here We've got another worm drive in the shaft here. So we'll do them next. Now for the worm drive, so the worm gears, I've went back and I slit open the ones I've done previously and then re-rolled them on 0.4 millimeter wire instead of the original 0.8. And then that will make them a bit smaller and tighter uh, for fitting in the space. So the first thing we want to do is just make sure these holes in the front plate are big enough. So we'll just go back in with the needle and just uh, 
Just make sure we can get the point three wire through it. So I've already made a couple. Uh, I made these over length and I've painted some of it already because access is going to be very restrictive later. And we can trim these back to size. Okay. So that's the wires in. So we'll take the two paper worm gears now. And we'll just slide them onto the shafts. Go. So again, with the seams, just turn it so this this is the underside, of course. So just turn it so the seams are at the bottom. None of this will be visible, but it's just a good practice. And then what we want to do now is glue the front of that shaft or the back. Sorry. So for that, we'll use uh, we we'll just use super glue again. I've had to get new glue because the other one was going very stringy. But unfortunately, it's not as gel as I'd like, so. So just taking a bit of wire. We want to put glue onto that front face of the saddle, which has got a little dot on it. And then we want to push, line the shaft up with it. Okay, and we'll do the other one. So that's the two shafts glued to the back edge or the front face of the saddle. And what we want to do now is we want to lock where the wire goes through the front plate. So for that, we'll just use the Weedworkers PVA. And we'll just pull the, pull the worm gear back from the front. And again, none of this will be seen because this is the underside. So we'll just put some PVA around the wire against the front panel the front plate and that will lock that in and then if we put the seam to the bottom and then we'll just push that forward and then again we can just use another touch of the PVA just to lock that there as well that's the front shafts and gears on it's lined up underneath so there's a shaft it goes across the top and you may be able to see there's two dots that show the location. So again, using the super glue, we'll just put some on that locating point. Then we'll just push that in. And then we'll just put it on the other point as well. And that's that. That's that shaft in place. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So next we'll go to the underside and I've already made the shaft a length with the, the worm gear glued to it and painted and then that fits in the back. And again, there's, uh, there's little white dots where that goes. So we'll just put that in. We'll just glue one side first. which is to the other side. And then that's it. Again, I've put the seam at the bottom. So if we turn it over, hopefully you can see the shafts and the gears 
okay now there's a bit of chipping along here but that's okay we'll tidy that up after so the next point is on the underside from that worm gear uh, is a, sh a gear here or a flat plate and then a shaft so we'll do that now so I'm not sure if you can see that. That's the, the little gear. We'll put that upside down. And there's a 0.3 brass, which was cut as per the diagram. So using super glue, again, we'll just touch the end of it. And then we'll just put it into the center. So what we'll do is we'll paint this white before we glue it. So this fits against that rear gear and to the underside of the saddle. And the drawings don't actually show you the exact position on this end. So what we do is taken from the gear to the saddle, we'll just trim it because it's too long. It's hitting the front plate. So we'll just snip that. Okay. And then for this, we'll just use PVA. So we'll just put a dot against the side of the, the worm gear and a dot on this front section here. Okay, so it's glued against the worm drive and it's glued to the base of the, the saddle and Again, because it's all underneath, we just put a touch of PVA on each side just to secure it. And that's plenty. So again, hopefully, hopefully you can see that. Okay, so the three seams are on the underside as well. Okay. So we'll trim this ones at the front. And what I've been doing is just doing it by eye. So it, they do stick out, I don't know, maybe half a mil. One's longer than the other. So I'm probably blocking a camera. Okay. So that's the two shafts sticking out. So all that remains now is to, to go over and touch them up with the white paint. Again, using the same. We'll just touch up this shaft here. And just that little bit where we cut it shorter. So with the internals done now, we can now do the top uh, shafts or cylinders, which we made previously. So the long one goes on the right hand side. And remember about the seams, turn it so the seams are downwards. And we're just going to use PVA again. So we'll just put a couple of dots at each end. Put the seam at the bottom. Make sure it's flush with the end. Okay. And then this one is the reverse where it's at the front. So dot of PVA at the front. And just to this section there. And then that's it. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. That's all the internals done with the, the main cylinders on as well. So it's not looking too bad. So we've still got a couple more parts to put on and we'll do that now. So this is the next parts to fit. We've got some kind of drum here is installed up at the top of the, the gun carriage. You've got two training gears here that run on the rack, which is forms part of the base plate. And then we've got a couple of shafts, uh, 0.3 and 0.5. Using super glue again, we'll just put a dab of glue and we'll fix this to the drum. That's a 0.3. And then for the training gears, we've got a 0.5. We'll fit that to the 
center of the gear. We'll paint the shafts white and then we'll cover the side edges of the gears, just re black again. I found if we just do the edge and try and keep it light, you can see the white, which is supposed to represent the gear teeth. So we'll try that. Before we do that, the other gear fits onto that white spot there and then the shaft fits underneath. So that's the drum ready to glue to the, the carriage. So what we'll do is we'll put some CA on the end of the shaft. So I think using the 0.8 mil wire in that cylinders, it's holding it a bit high. I don't know if you can see inside that there's there's two gear wheels. It should be in line with the center of that first gear wheel. Uh, but it, obviously the 0.8 mil is holding it up a bit, but I think I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to leave it in that position. What I might do is just use some dilute PVA to uh, kind of just secure it a bit more. PVA diluted as well, so it will dry clear. And with it being a white paper, it's going to, you won't see it. I'll see if I can do some on the underside. Yeah, I'll just do a touch, just where it touches the paper of the cylinder. So it looks kind of messy, but that will dry clear because it's very diluted, it will shrink back anyway. So next up, we'll put the gear wheel. I don't know where to hold this now. So using PVA, we'll just put a dot there. Place it there. So hopefully you can see, we'll place the gear where that uh, circle marking was on top of that and then that f corresponds to the underside so we'll flip this over and what I'll need to do is I'll need to use uh, super glue for this one okay so hopefully you can see gears now on top and bottom it's not actually perfectly aligned but i'm going to leave it very much glued on now but that's okay so ideally it should be over this way i'm going to leave it so that's a drum on at the top and the two gears so the only thing that remains now for this is the wheels the barrel and the hand wheel so next thing we'll do is we'll finish off the, the gun barrel itself, breach together and attach it. So using PVA, we'll just put some in the middle there, the white. And then the opening breach goes on top. Okay, so there's no white showing, so that's good. So what we'll do is we'll find the seams, or the worst of the seams, because they're a bit staggered, and we'll make that the bottom. So if we, when it's in position, if we turn it that way, when you're looking down to view it, you'll be coming in from the top and see the better surface. The breech itself, if this is the top, sits in that orientation with the opening breech at this side. So what we'll do is we'll apply quite a liberal amount of glue here. And then we'll place the breech and then we'll try and center it. I have to be careful on the end, it's easy to bend it. But it's not the best fit. Uh, the barrel itself, when it's rolled into a bit of a spiral, I did try and trim it best I could. So that's not too bad. So if you look on the underside, you can still see some white, that's fine. We can touch that up with black paint afterwards. So we'll leave that to go off for the time being. This last piece here is to represent the elevation gear and that glue, glues onto the side. But we won't know its position yet. We'll have to hold it up to the, to the gun carriage. And I'll colour this black as well because it sticks up so you'd be able to see it. So we'll let that go off and then we'll come back. So the next part is the hand wheel and its shaft here. So as you can see, the, the shaft for the, the hand wheel is relatively thick. So I used 0.8 for this section here, if you remember. This looks slightly smaller. So what I've done is I've made another one cut to the length as the diagrams, but I've made it 0.5. And as you can see, there's a, some kind of bearing here and 
at the end as well. I've just wrapped some thin paper around the 0.5 brass. I've gave it a, a first coat of white as well. Obviously it's going to chip with handling, but that's okay. We'll touch it up once it gets into place. Put the, the white, I put the paper around there and there. Also to give it a better uh, gluing area, because this is paper and that's paper. So paper to paper will be a, a stronger join. And then we'll do the hand feel. Now, in the past, I did say I was going to solder up the hand wheels, uh, out of wire. To be honest, it's too much work. I'm just going to use the paper one. So we've made these previously and they're the double thickness. And what we do is we'll use the, the chisel that I showed you how to make in another video. So we'll cut this up now, see how we get on. So you always want to cut where you, against a surface that you've got support on. So what we do is we'll take all the inner parts out, but we won't remove them until we've trimmed them all. And that just prevents the blade pushing the thin sections apart. Hopefully you can see. So if we were to remove that inner segment and you come to cut the other segment, the knife will push the thin uh, brace apart. When I was telling a friend I was going to solder up a wire hand wheels, he says, why did you not just buy foot watch ones? To be honest, it was like, don't, never even thought of it. And it would have made much more sense than trying to solder the own ones. So with these kind of now went through, we can start seeing if we can start removing the waste. Some of it's, uh, it's just a case of working the, the bits again, where eventually we didn't go all the way through in the first cut. And as you can see, I'm doing it on the MDF because if we do it on the mat, it will sink in before it cuts it and you risk distorting the part. So the MDF just gives it a real solid surface. Ideally, we'd have just chopped this in one instead of having to go round and round, but with it being double thickness, it's quite hard to. So that's a waste in the center removed. So we'll just use the knife again. We'll take the bulk of the waste off and then we'll just work our way around. We only recently found these Tamiya type knives good for this site. Before I used to use the number 11. These little blades on the angle as well. It makes it really a lot easier than the number 11. Okay. So hopefully you can see it. Now, the segment, the inner segment, seem a wee bit rough, but what I think will happen is once we come to brush paint it with the watercolours, it will knock down some of that. So I think what we'll do now is we'll glue this onto the, onto the shaft and then we can paint it easier. So for the glue, we'll use the uh, super glue. So just dip the end. Better. Okay. So we'll just make sure it's on square. Okay, it's not too bad. So we'll leave that to go off, and then we'll come back in and paint it and fix it to the carriage. Okay, so here's the carriage and the gun barrel. So what I did is I just slid it back onto the point eight tube for ease of handling. So there's a band here and that's what fits in the mounting. As you can see, it's a fair bit of play. So I wasn't too accurate in my assembly. What we can do is I'll punch up some uh, circles and paper and then we'll glue them in place and that'll take up the, the slack. So I'll punch out a couple of 0.9 millimeter discs with the paper. So I'll just try to work up where to hold this thing now. We just put a little bit of PVA Squeeze it without damaging anything. Okay, so hopefully that's enough to. Oh, yep. Yeah. 
So if I can slide this off, now the barrel with the breech horizontal that way should, there we go. Okay, so that's looking quite good. Uh, not sure if you can see that. I don't want to glue the barrels in at this stage because I don't know how we're going to fit them on the ship. Okay, so that's looking quite good. So we've got that, we've got this gear here and that fits in there. So it's against that. So I'll probably have to do this off screen, but it's very hard to see now. But it slides down in there next to that gear it's on the carriage. So if you can see these two gears, I'm not sure, hopefully you can see these two representation of gears. This fits on the gun barrel in that position there. Okay, so hopefully you can see that's our elevation gear in now because it's flat and the barrel's curved. The contact point's very small. So that's, again, PVA glue, but just a tiny dot. So hopefully that's enough to hold that. And as you can see, it's up to the gear. So the last thing that remains now is the uh, hand wheel. That's a cut out. Hopefully you can see the segments are visible, just. But all that remains now is to glue it into position. So I'll just take the gun barrel off and we'll put that aside safely. Oh, actually, you can see the, the gear on there now. And then the breech, okay. So to glue this on, we'll put a PVA on this edge and the underside of the drum. And that will line up with the two bands that I put on. If you remember, these bonds were put in extra. They weren't in the instructions. But it was to better match the, the diagram. So I'm just trying to hold this without damaging it. So. Okay, so we'll let that glue go off and then I'll touch up the white and then we'll, we'll come back and assess. Okay, so that's the gun finished. As you can see, I've touched up the white for the hand wheel shaft. The gun bar was just temporary in place. And as mentioned previously, I haven't done the wheels yet. I'll leave that to when we come to fit the carriages onto the actual uh, hull structure itself. So I'm going to end this video here. There's a number of reasons. Uh, I guess the first point is, is, is all this effort really worth it? On a whole, I'd have to say no. If I was building this just for myself and not for videoing, I would have stopped at the stage of uh, end of part eight, and that would have been good enough, I think. You're just not going to see all this internal details. You, you can't see them now with a barrel in place. So it kind of kind of defeats purpose. It's a lot of effort. It was a lot of work. I ended up not making the brass hand wheels. I haven't shown the barrels because to be honest, I haven't rolled anymore because the two other attempts I did, I destroyed them. I just can't do it. So I'm going to have to make two from scratch to replace the ones I damaged. And I will I'll keep going and I'll video every attempt and then if we come to, and if I get to a stage where I'm successful, uh, then I'll, I'll post that up. But I guess the, it was worth it just for doing the exercise really. I mean, there was a lot of things on here, you know, they're not going to be seen. So it's, it's good practice because if you mess it up, it doesn't matter. Maybe if it wasn't 10 of them as well, maybe only five or something, it, it got a bit repetitive after a while. So with that said, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll catch you next time.